Hello, I am Dr. Amy Reed, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about claudication. Claudication is a form of PAD, or peripheral arterial disease, characterized by exertional pain or discomfort in the calves, thighs, or buttocks, which is relieved by rest. Rather than pain, some patients may experience cramping, aching, tiredness, or heaviness in leg and or buttock muscles that make it difficult to continue walking. Symptoms typically resolve after a few minutes of rest. Walking up an incline, climbing steps, or moving quickly may bring on symptoms sooner. While claudication can develop fairly abruptly, most patients experience a gradual onset over weeks to months. Many times the subtle nature of early symptoms may lead patients to believe it's just a sign of getting old. This is particularly true of women who were initially not thought to develop peripheral arterial disease as commonly as men. Claudication develops due to inadequate blood supply to the muscles in the legs or buttocks. This occurs when the arteries have narrowings or blockages in them which have developed from buildup of fat and cholesterol called plaque. At rest, enough blood is able to get through the narrowings to nourish the muscles, but with exercise, the increased demand cannot be met. The artery is unable to dilate or get larger to increase the blood flow need by the working muscle. When the active muscle does not get the food or blood it needs, it will begin to tire and cause pain or aching. Buildup of plaque is common in patients who smoke, have diabetes, heart disease, or who have elevated cholesterol. A family history of circulation problems also puts an individual at risk. Initial treatment of claudication begins with modification of risk factors. This includes stopping smoking, controlling blood sugars, and eating a diet low in cholesterol and fats. A structured walking program has been shown to improve walking distance, as have certain medications. It is important for patients to know that damage is not being done to muscles, nerves, or blood vessels when pain or fatigue develops in the legs or buttocks while exercising. This is simply the muscles cry for more blood, much as if a stomach was growling for food. If risk factors have been modified, options do exist to open up the arteries with balloons or stents, oftentimes as an outpatient. In these cases, a slender tubing with a deflated balloon on the end of it is advanced to the area of narrowing and then inflated. This is called angioplasty. Plaque will be flattened against the wall of the artery in order to provide a larger opening in the artery. If the plaque recoils or does not respond, then a metal stent is put in place to prop open the artery and keep the plaque up against the wall. Patients are then observed for several hours and typically remain on a blood thinner for a period of time after the procedure. If angioplasty or stenting are not feasible, open surgical bypass is still a possibility. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, careers, etc., please visit vascularweb.org.